You are listening to the G Spot. G Spot. With David Grant. Winners do what losers don't. All right, so welcome back. I believe this is episode four or five. Uh, I've got to actually check because this is the first one I've done in a while and the first one in a new year. And if you're listening to this, I'm curious to see what it's going to sound like because I'm actually filming it and I'm going to put this up on YouTube and IGTV, so Instagram television. So if you're watching this, you can see me talk and uh, you can see the back of my room. If you're listening to this, that's also okay. I just hope that it's as clear as it always is. I'm going to adjust this microphone here a little bit. Let's see one second. There we go. Get it closer to me. So I got my standing desk going on. Thanks to Bull Concept here in my uh, in my room. You can see everything. Well, actually, there's like nothing in the background. I'll go ahead and close this here. And uh, yeah, so here we go. So I was going to talk today about um, being sick and uh, how I had not been sick in three years. Got sick and basically got a lot better over the weekend and how I did it and why I did it and some cool nutritional stuff. However, I'm going to make a transition into something else and I'm going to this week talk about the one-legged squat and the pistol squat and then the next time because I want to do two of these a month, I'm going to go into the... um being sick. So if you guys want to know about that and you girls, if everybody wants to hear about what I did when I was sick and the cold potatoes and the um, sorfola fan that I got from the broccoli sprouts and uh, the kakuma, uh, sorry, kakuma turmeric, what it, what it depends on where in the world you come from, uh, that I just pounded and along with the ginger I ate, hit me up on uh, yeah Instagram or message me at uh, david at gtsgermany.com, right on my Facebook. You guys have me many, many places. Let me know that you want to hear about that because uh yeah i'm going to talk about it anyways but the more i know what you all of you want to hear about the better so today what i want to go into is the one-legged squat versus the pistol squat because i released that video on uh, igtv the other day and it got a lot of hits and a lot of comments and a lot of dms so direct messages and i'm going to release it on youtube also and i'll be curious to see what happens with that there too so let's go in a little bit to um why i Uh, did that video and why I think it's very interesting for people to understand the difference between the pistol squat, the one leg squat, uh, and the application of it because really there's the pistol squat is a one leg squat. The reason I differentiate between the two is because I think, uh, I th- so I'm trying to kind of get this thing down where I'm not staring at the microphone because for the first time I'm filming this also. So got to get better at this, at my game here. But listen, so the, with, with a lot of the functional fitness, with a lot of the CrossFit, with a lot of these, um, these fitness courses that have come up with, uh, focusing really on this hypertrophy training. So circuit style training and body weight stuff, and just being as strong as you can. And really some of the crazy exercises that come along with it, the pistol squat became uh, very famous. And that is the one leg squat. Now for me, with my physio background, with my injury background, with my training background, when I first saw the pistol squat, I thought, wow, okay, you know, that's going to be uh, pretty pretty hard for a lot of people. Uh, we know that in order to really do a correct deep squat, meaning with two legs, so a normal squat where you're really dropping down, you need very good ankle mobility. Many people don't have very good ankle mobility. I would actually say almost nobody really does unless they're GLL by genetic design. So generalized ligamous laxity. Those are the people that are very, very, very flexible. Um, you For the people watching, if you take your thumb and you can bend it all the way down. So people listening, if you were to grab your thumb and you can get it to touch your forearm, uh, that's a pretty good sign if someone is GLL because in order for that to happen, your your capsule of the your your capsule has to be loose so your collagen and your fascia and things like that your muscles need to be loose your ligaments that attach bones to bones need to be loose and and your skin too and gll this generalized ligament laxity is uh basically a genetic thing where your guys is, or the people that have this their collagen is wound a little bit looser than everybody else's so if you have that that just means you're more flexible it's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. I would probably argue with the amount that we sit and not move and the fact that kids are getting the recess taken away and just all of that jazz. I would almost think it's a little bit better. Uh, from a sports standpoint, when we work with like a team of you know 90 football players on a professional NFL roster, a lot of times it's good for us to know this because then we can kind of start to create two subgroups. Yeah, If we're doing uh, some mobility and some corrective exercise work, the people that are GLL probably need 
need much less stressing, uh, stressing, much less stretching and uh, maybe more activation. So mobility and correct and like uh, stability exercises where the people like myself that are very tight might want to focus on the range of motion and the mobility. So it's a nice way to kind of separate the two groups and uh, make it much, yeah, make a personalized approach to a much larger group of people when you're kind of understaffed, if you will. But moving on, um, yeah, so back to the pistol squat, which I thought was, which I think is interesting, is we started seeing a bunch of people do these things. Now, if you don't really have the strength to do it, or the mobility, and or you have both, but you're just, you know, you have to do as many as you can in five minutes, uh, or, you know, 100 before you're done with the workout, or whatever, a lot of times what happens, as we know, is when we get tired, our our technique, you know, goes in the shitter basically. And and the problem with that is as our technique fails, it just would be as if your brakes weren't good, your tires were bad, or they needed to be aligned, or you didn't have enough oil in your engine or old old oil, your car would begin to break down because it needs to be taken care of in order to to work properly. And so a lot of times when I would be watching the CrossFit games, funny enough, even the pro athletes, because of what they're doing at such a high level, you would see them as they get tired. They would drop down in the pistol squat, so a one leg squat, and it's a deep squat because they're going down all the way. And then as they pushed up, you would see their heel completely lift in the air and then really kind of push off their toe, almost trying to push themselves forward, which is a lot of sheer force on the knee. So kind of the sliding forward like that within the within the knee or the patella, so the knee bone joint. And this is uh yeah, this is bad news because we already have a lot of issues with knee pain, with patella femoral syndrome, which is the fancy way of saying knee pain with tendonitis, basically, uh, jumper's knee, runner's knee, or just overall pain in the knee. So with that being said, I, I think it's kind of counterintuitive for a lot of people to go into any type of class or even train on their own and just believe that, you know, this pistol squat is a goal that they have and they really want to crush it and get it done. Because a lot of times what I think they end up doing is really just kind of crushing their own knee and, uh, yeah injuring themselves or, or putting their knee in pain, which in return prevents them from doing what they love, stops them from doing what they're usually doing. And if they're trying to stay active, they're trying to lose weight, well, then, you know, not being able to move and bringing kind of pain and injury to yourself is the last thing that we want to do. But if we re- inverse that pistol squat and we call it a one leg squat, which is what my video was called, the whole game changes because, you know, if we think about... um if we think about the context of balance, right, our, our everything should always be in balance, right? So from the government to political affairs to our, our relationship to, I don't know, to the healthy diet, we have everything basically relies on a good balance, right? And when we think about a normal squat, well, we're using both of our legs. And if people are like, yeah, okay, cool, but I don't really squat that much, that's not necessarily true because every time you sit and you stand or you're getting out of bed or you pick something up, you're, you're using squatting mechanics. I mean, you can even argue that when you walk, you're doing a very, very basic uh, lunge technique, right? You're not obviously dropping all the way down. That would look a bit funny, but you are, yeah, you are, you are lunging. So really from a deadlift to a lunge to a squat, that basically makes up every single movement that all of us are doing. So from a kid to a adolescent, to an adult, to grandma, you know, getting something off the floor or getting out of a chair, we all are squatting. And when we do squat, so I'm going to speak towards the cohort of people that are, you know, uh, in the gym, doing some type of training, or even in that case, actually everybody just that, that sits and stands from a chair. When we stand up or when we squat, when we use both of our legs, we are assuming that they are balanced. However, I I doubt they really are. Most of us have a dominant leg and it's even more dominant if we have played sports. In soccer, for example, we kick the ball more. I'm left footed, but I assume the average person listening to this is probably right footed. So if you're playing soccer, you're kicking the ball with your right foot. If you're What else would be? Um, A lot of times when we're training and we're doing the speed ladder or we are running around cones or we're sprinting or really anything, we're always leading with the same foot, um, with the 
same leg, if you will. And so we develop this dominant leg just, just basically by what we are doing during the day. And then on top, if you throw injury into that, so if you, you know, God forbid, had an actual surgery like an ACL, a meniscus, or if you even sprained your ankle or even just pulled a hamstring, you're going to realize that that leg might have gotten one weaker because you haven't done it. You didn't use it. You had to take a break with it. Or two, it actually might have even be, be stronger than your other one because you had to do the rehab. You had to go to physical therapy and you focused on it so much that it actually became more dominant and stronger. So the irony of it is it can really be both. It could be either or. Well, not both at the same time, obviously, but it could be either or. So the only way we can really figure this one out is by doing some type of test to understand uh, which leg is stronger and weaker. Now, a lot of times what we will do in the physio world, in the fitness world, is we do the Bulgarian split squat, which is uh, uh, basically a lunge with one foot forward and the other one back on a bench or a box or something like that, which is also not a bad exercise. But I think that's great to test your quad dominance, so the, the strength of your quadriceps, and also in, in, a, in a lunge type motion. But like I said before, the movements from our lower body, from sitting and standing and walking and running and jogging and jumping and all of that jazz, getting off the floor, yoga for that fact, is lunging, deadlifting, and squatting. So the Bulgarian split squat is great to see the leg dominant, so the stronger and the weaker leg, within a lunge. But I think the pistol squat, i.e. the new name, the one leg squat, is a fantastic way to check our balance and our strength within uh, within a squ- within a squat. Because what's going to happen is, you know, our body should be in balance, but if it's not, it's always going to teeter to its dominant dominant side. So for me, I have to think about it because my legs are all jacked up. I played the cross. I injured both of them. Um, but, um, ambidextrous with my hands because of lacrosse and because I bartended for like five years. So I can actually do everything with my left and right hand, except I cannot write with my right hand. Uh, so a little bit of a tangent there, but just so you guys, interesting news maybe. Um, but what am I, what was my weaker side? I've balanced them both out, but I believe actually my left side was weaker because I had... Uh, my left foot is my dominant foot. No, that's wrong. It was my right side. Sorry, they're they're balanced now, so I had to think about it. So I am actually left-footed, and I did play soccer half my life, and I did use my left leg much more than my right, and I injured my right quite often. So that meant my left leg, when I went down to do a pistol squat, or I'm sorry, I'm going to say a one-leg squat because I actually also kind of stayed away from pistol squats because my ankle range of motion, my Achilles, is not fantastic. But when I would go down on my left, it was much easier, if you will, than my right. My right, I was like Bambi on ice. I just basically collapsed. So what I realized was when I was squatting, I was filming myself one day from behind. So I set my camera down, turned the film on, stood in front of the squat, uh, the squat rack and just started doing some squats. And I realized that I was very dominant to my left side as I was pushing the weight up. Now, the irony in that situation is that when we're in the gym, including myself, I was uh, always thinking like, okay, you know what? I, I need to get my, my, my legs stronger. I had a girlfriend that was 60 kilometers away, so I was driving two hours a day, one hour there, one hour back, and that was really preventing me from uh, hitting the gym. And my back, probably due to my scoliosis too, started really getting tight. So when I would squat heavy, I started throwing my back out. So for about two years, I kept my squats pretty light uh, because I didn't want to hurt my back. But then I actually, we broke up. I moved back to Stuttgart West. So now it's a 15 minute drive to my office and I was much closer. And not only did I have more time to train, but I wanted to try to get my strength back in my squats. So I wanted to do a little analysis of what was going on because I realized that when I was squatting, the weights were shifting a little bit. They were always sliding to the, what was it? I think the left one. No, now they were sliding to the right because I was dominant with my left. So I was kind of coming out up at a right uh, angle, if you will. No, right angle makes no sense. I was coming up crooked, if you will. So that was sliding the weight plates off when I didn't have them clamped down, which again, on a tangent, is a fantastic way to kind of check your balance. I mean, obviously you can film, you can have somebody just watch you from behind or Don't put the clamps on. Do some squats. Make sure you take it off the rack well and put it back well. And then you can see if the weights have slid because if they have and they're not like complete pieces of crap, so that means they shouldn't. Oh boy, my light just turned itself off. All right, well, if you guys are watching my backlight, just turn itself off, but why? 
Hmm. I don't know. Either way, we're going to continue here. I got a, uh, what do you call it? A Philips Hue. And uh, yeah, it was a nice backlight while it lasted, but now it's off. All right, back on point. So um, yeah, so that's a fantastic way to check your... Uh, to, to, to check if you guys are coming up uh, straight, basically, is if you don't have the clamps on the side of the bar when you're doing squats, uh, they should remain in the same place. They shouldn't be sliding left or right. And mine was sliding right. And then when I filmed myself, I saw that I had a very dominant left, uh, left leg strength. So I went into the one-legged squat, which if you watch my video on IGTV, you will see the difference in which I talk about. I'm not trying to just bust out 10 or 20 with absolutely no help. I'm actually using a metal uh, pull. I'm in between a squat rack and I'm holding on to that as I'm squatting down and up and I'm using it for as much assistance as I need in order to, one, test both legs, see what's going on, see which one is stronger, see which one is weaker. And then when I recognized for me that my right leg was much weaker than my left, of course, my two-legged squat, so a normal squat, is going to be out of balance. And my body is just going to do what it needs to do in order to lift that weight. So a of course, I'm going to drive more off of my left side. This is a bit counterintuitive for me to think, oh, hey, you know what? I'm not driving anymore. I live in Stuttgart West. I have more time to train. I want to get my leg strength back. Well, before I start building this power and strength, if you will, in my legs, I should probably focus on a proper infrastructure because as I said in the video, our body relies on balance. So if you're out of balance, it is uh, like a tug of war in between your body and your body doesn't understand this. So I've always said, actually, you're better off if both sides are terrible or if both sides are good. Having one side great and the other side bad is very tough for your body. And I always compare it to like a tug of war. So it's basically like team Navy SEALs versus team toddlers. The Navy SEALs are always going to win. So what we need to do is we need to get this tug of war in this case, which is really going to be cranking on your hips uh, to stop because eventually something in your hips is going to go, going to give. And usually that thing that gives is called your sacroiliac joint. And this is what all of the layman people know as throwing their back out. And when that goes out, it's extremely painful. And you usually can't really move for about four, oh, well, I would say four or five days. The average person might be knocked out for about 14. So, and this is often really just due to, yeah, sure, weakness and all of that, maybe. But I would argue that it's a, it's a disimbalance between the tightness on one one side and the other side is again team navy seals versus team toddlers <laughs> excuse me i was a bit sick as i said in the beginning of the podcast so i gotta clear my throat there so so what we want to do is we want to focus on that and in this case since we're talking about a one-legged squat now what we want to do with that squat is we want to again use as much assistance as we need so if we need to use a bar or a trx or whatever to maintain the proper technique that's what we want to do. And if we focus and we notice we have a weak side, so mine was the right side, then we want to focus on that side more. So meaning what I was doing was I was going into about, I think it was two sets on my left for about seven to 10, because I wanted to make sure the technique was good, uh, assisting myself as much as I needed. But then on my right side, if I did two sets of seven or 10, I would do four sets on my right side of seven to 10 to try to catch the strength back up and balance them back out. Now, a lot of times we always learn that we want to do the boat, uh, the same on both sides, which technically is true, but not if there's an uh, not if there's an imbalance. Because if there's an imbalance, well, obviously one side is weaker or stronger than the other. So, in order to bring those back into balance, we need to devise a plan which is going to allow the other one to catch up versus the other one. Well, we want the weak one to catch up with the strong one, so then they're both in a in, in proper form versus obviously the strong one to catch up with the weak one. That's just a bit, that's just a bad idea all the way around. So in order to do that, we do need to kind of stagger the, the strength program, stagger the, stagger the exercise in order for one to catch up with the other. And then once I started doing that, excuse me, lo and behold, I go back to the squat rack. One, my weights don't shift anymore. Two, I ended up getting stronger because now my other leg, my right leg, is assisting in the in the in the normal squat, so the dual leg squat. And then when I filmed myself, my squat was actually much straighter because my right leg was now being able to pitch in, so to speak, and help with that movement as I was squatting up and down. So this, I think, is a very interesting topic because as a physio, I was always telling people, you know what? Um, the pistol squat is a bad idea for many people. But then I thought about it and I said, well, wait a second. If we're squatting all the time, everybody wants to get stronger. Well, 
a squat, you know, is uh, is basically two single leg squats, right? So each side put together. So if we want to look at the infrastructure of something and build from the base up, which we always would in every other exercise, like the shoulder and the rotator cuff, we would we should have the same focus with the hips. However, we need to be careful because we know that, or I know that a lot of people are missing the strength, missing the range of motion in their Achilles, in their ankle. Nonetheless, I'm sure some of them in their knee and their hip. So we don't want to do more damage as we're trying to catch the body, as we're trying to balance the body back out. But if the body is out of balance, it's going to be doing damage all by itself anyways. So this is why I think it's a bit ironic to call the pistol squat the one leg squat. The one leg squat is okay for everybody. Well, the pistol squat is probably okay for your top 10% of high performers, even though it's the same exercise. But the intent the, uh, what would you say, the practice of it, and the, what word am I looking for here, application, I don't know if I already said that one, is different, it's completely different, but it's the same exercise, so really it just goes down to um, the intent and the context, how you could apply that to life, of uh, of of what is behind it, and, and what is the point of it, if it makes it a good exercise, or 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 not a bad exercise, but one that might not be in your best interest. So that is, I think, uh, yeah, a really interesting topic because um, I had kind of, we have people walking down the street dressed like uh, hobbits here, sorry. I'm uh, living now in the middle of the city and my my balcony looks right off onto uh, the famous streets of Stuttgart in a very uh, nice cafe called Lumen Cafe for anyone that comes from this area. But uh, yeah, so some hobbits walking down the road. Sorry, got a little bit sidetracked there. But um, I think it's very interesting, this topic of the pistol squat in the one leg squat, because for a very long time, I was actually kind of a, uh, not a big fan of the pistol squat. And then I realized that funny enough, I, it was exactly kind of what I needed to do, but I needed to do it under different contexts, different rules and different goals. That ladies and gentlemen was the birth of the one legged squat for me in my terminology in the way that I wanted to say it. So I hope that clarifies everything for all of you. Uh, let me know in your comments if you guys have any questions. Uh, also people watching this, um, let me know how it goes. I know I'm kind of staring down because it's weird to stare at the camera when I know I'm talking into the microphone. And if I want to see myself, not that I'm in love with myself, but it's nice to see who you're talking to, if that makes any sense. It's a bit weird to always stare in the little eye of the iPhone. So give me your guys' comments. Let me know how it goes. Let me know what you thought. Uh, I know I've got a very international audience, so I hope I speak clear and slow enough. And uh, yeah, this one will be these podcasts, uh, The G-Spot, because my last name is Grant and my dog's name is Guji. So I thought The G-Spot was a bit funny. Uh, will be two times a month from now on. So um, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Check out my uh, online store for a uh, one-time, one-off, we would say. So PDFs, programs of for the knee, for the ankle, for the elbow and wrist, for the shoulder. And uh, also, if it's not live by the time you've heard this, it should be very soon. My Unbreakable Body monthly membership. You get a 30-day free trial program. So check that out because it comes with live coaching calls where it's me truly and we use Zoom software. So it's not like you're stuck on some Facebook group and you have to type in your questions, praying to God to answer it. We all click in with video if we want. You can also turn your video off for the shyer people out there. But if not, you click in, we talk face to face and you can ask me anything from the unbreakable body from the lifestyle portion of it that goes into the nutrition the sleep the so the sleep science the nutrition so i start over again the mindset and uh, what was the other one ah uh, yeah and the wim hof stuff or you can ask me anything you want you see something online you learn about some diet you learn about whatever you're you're you just have some random question and you want my opinion that is also allowed in the coaching calls and they're going to be every monday at eight o'clock starting the mid of january so uh if you hear this right when i uh launch it it might be a little bit before but if you've downloaded this after well then there you go we're live and we are waiting for you to join so the website gtsgermany.com it's the unbreakable body link you can check me on instagram at uh, rehab gts and like i said share this with your friends tell everyone how great it is let me know how terrible it is if that's what you think engage stay in touch and i will talk to you all next time If you want to find the G-Spot faster, make sure to subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher. Follow Grant Training Systems on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, or simply gtsgermany.com.
And most importantly, make sure to show and share the G-Spot with your friends.